My name is Paul Connor. I'm an assistant football coach at Wheaton North High School in suburban Chicago. Uh, it is an ultimate pleasure for me to once again uh, provide some information and teaching and coaching for Coach's Choice and Dr. Jim Peterson. I, I have to tell you, I feel honored to be working for Coach's Choice and Dr. Jim. Uh, this is uh, fun for me. I'm an old guy now. It is, it is uh, go through the, the period of time in my life where it's time for me to give back and share with other young coaches. So I'm so pleased to be with Coach's Choice and, and do this series of tapes. Uh, before I do this, I think it's only correct that I acknowledge some people that have been instrumental in my background in helping me, helping me uh, develop a coaching career. I'm going into my 35th year coming up here. And uh, so many people have helped me learn what I've been able to learn. I've thought of none of these things. I've just borrowed and taken from people I respect. Uh, people like uh, Rich Johanningmeyer, who uh, gave me my start in coaching back in 1976, a really great uh, old-time wing T guy. And uh, Mickey Kwiatkowski, uh, Tubby Raymond, Greg Perry, uh, Ted Kemsky, uh, the late Mike McGlinchey have all helped me understand the wing T and taught me what, uh, what I think I know, or at least the information they have taught I have picked up. So uh, I thank all those gentlemen for, for helping me with my career and being able to do this. I have done uh, a lot of different tapes for Coach's Choice. I'm a wing T guy. And uh, I've, I've gotten to the point where now I, I, start, uh, I start to deal with conceptual things rather than here's how you install the belly series. Here's how you install buck sweep. Here's how you install jet series. I've gone to conceptual things. Uh, for instance, today what I want to do is talk about uh, uh, breaking tendencies with weak side offense. We with the wing T, at least with me and my background, being very traditional, <clears throat> I want to have a tight end on the field. Uh, I want to have one of those guys that can block down. I want to have one of those guys who can reach. I want to have one of those big guys who can uh, give me a decided advantage in running the tight end wing flank. Uh, wing T guys traditionally uh, are, are guys that want to utilize that tight end wing. I, I think if you put us on a percentage, you know, you scout us as people are doing now, and, and people on defense look at us, I believe most of us, including myself, at the top of the list, will have a very high percentage of play selections to the tight end wing. Uh, and that makes sense. Otherwise, why the heck have the tight end on the field? We want that guy on the field so we can utilize him as a blocker. But I think defenses tend to do certain things to, uh, to take that away uh, because they know we want to go that way. So I, I would advise you, because I've made these mistakes before, I'm just trying to save you from making the same ones. Have a weak side package to balance your offense and your play selection because they're gonna gang up on you to the tight end wing. So, weak side offense. I've got a lot of things to share with you. I'll technique you, I'll demonstrate certain things, and these will be play selections to help you balance your system to stay one step ahead of the posse as people try to gang up on your tight end wing. Now, some of those things people will do to, to try to take that tight end wing game away is rotate the secondary. You know, they'll, whether they're a three-deep team, a cover-two team, or even a quarters team, a man team, they will gang up and try to match you up and checkmate you to the tight end wing. A problem I traditionally have run into is people who are three-deep, and they'll take the strong safety, and they'll eyeball him on the tight end or wing. And they'll pre-rotate. They'll play a three-deep umbrella in back of a pre-rotated strong safety to the tight end wing, and I, I can sit there and say, well, I'll still run buck sweep, I'll still run jet, I'll still run down and down option, and uh, that's a pipe dream. I'm not a very good coach if I want to slam my head into that concrete wall over there. i got to come up with something different because they're taking the tight end wing away with that pre-rotated secondary. Lots of people will slant their front. They will, they will play balanced secondary or however they want to play a tight end wing, dive back, split end to the backside but they will slant their front to compensate for the fact that I am a guy who runs more to the tight end wing than I do away, like most people, I would imagine. Some people pre-set their defensive front. They overshift. They'll slide that nose over to a two or a three, and they'll reduce the backside, uh, something I used to call eagle over in the old days because I'm kind of an old days guy. But whatever you want to call it, they have preset their defensive front shading to the tight end wing with the percentages being you're running there. Those are some things I try to combat or look for when I'm trying to design an offensive package. 
I've learned in, in, in doing this for so many years that breaking traditional formations, whether you have that tight end or not, is a lot more practical. So I don't, I get out of the standard 100, 900 type formation and run wing tight end one way and slot to the weak side to, uh, to stress the defense a little more. But, but whatever it is, there's still a tight end wing to the back side. So I, when I say weak side attack, just so I'm not confusing anyone or taking anything for granted, I hate doing that. I'm talking about running offense to the split end side, no matter what your weak side halfback is, whether he's in a dive back standard set, just like Tubb used to teach, or whether he's in a slot, whether he's doing more of, of Dennis Crehan's type stuff or those kinds of gentlemen that like to do that, the Jerry Gallagher's of the world. So what that, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking weak side, and now we'll start showing you some of the little doodads we can do here to help people and keep them honest. I've got what I call double, double wing here now, and I know people have different names for it, red, blue, whatever the heck they want to call it, but uh, I'm, I'm concentrating on weak side here. Don't get stuck running everything to the tight end. They'll gang up on your rear end. So, People sometimes want to know, well, what, what can you do to the weak side? You haven't got a tight end. There, there's a ton of football to the weak side, as, as I will tell you right now. Uh, you have buck sweep to the weak side. St staple, staple thing, right? That's, that's, way, that's so wing T and so great still. It's still great. You got buck sweep. You've got the more innovative and more, more current jet sweep, which is dynamic which pressures the daylights out of a defensive flank. You have waggle. Um, you have belly keep pass. You have cross block belly, hitting that B gap to the weak side tackle and guard. You have power, commonly known as fullback kick out. You can run weak side trap. If I'm running waggle and buck sweep to the weak side, I'm sure as heck going to be running trap to keep my packaging together. I'm a wing T guy. I'm not going to grab bag. I'm running package football here in series football, in conflict-oriented football. Uh, I'm going to run a counter crisscross that way. Great, fun play. Kids love it. It's fun to teach, fun to execute. Uh, I'm going to run a, a belly keep pass, pass switch, which I'll show you a little later here, where we change a couple routes to keep defensive secondaries from gearing in on us and getting patterned with us. So. Uh, those are things to the weak side. That's a ton of football. If you can execute those things to the weak side, you, you have a, a pretty darn complete game plan. You're hitting every hole on that side of the football. You're throwing it. You're running it. You're running some option. You're, you're, you're running belly. You're running sweeps. You're running a pretty good package to the weak side to stay away from that tight end tendency you have and the percentages that you're going to be a tight end wing guy. I, I think right now I, I also want to talk about something conceptually that uh, I think I'd be remiss if I skipped it. And, and we call this uh, alignment, vertical and horizontal alignment. The only reason I'm mentioning it right now is before I get into play selections and talking about how to get to people and attack them, I think we need to line up correctly if we're wing, wing T people. I've spoken in, uh, I don't know, 27, 28, 29 states through the last 35 years about this stuff. And it's amazing to me the amount of wing T people that do not that do not align the way that the uh, Wing T Bible from, from Tubby and the guys tells us that we should, should be aligning. So when I talk about horizontal alignment, I'm talking about splits on the line of scrimmage. Tackle to tackle, we're two-foot splits. We're two-foot splits. We don't tighten for certain things, widen for other things. That tends to screw around and mess with the alignment of our wings. And our wings are looking to time their motion such that their mesh points and their relationship with the quarterback, whether they're getting the ball or not, makes the defense think they're getting it when they're not and makes the defense think they haven't got it when they do. So we don't, we don't want the wing to be out of sync with his motion. We want the motion to look as consistent as possible all the time. So what I'm saying is, if I made the guard and tackles splits one foot for certain plays, the wing would have to tighten up accordingly, and in motion, he may get to the quarterback too quickly, and the quarterback is having to reach to get him the ball and buck sweep or something like that. I, I call this integrity. We're going to maintain two foot splits come hell or high water from tackle to tackle. Tight end's a little different story where we fool around with even fronts and eight-man fronts, and we have the tight end get perhaps a nasty flex 
If in fact we want to stress that guy who's a seven technique, that's a horse of a different color, but, but we, we will fool with the tight end splits a little bit and also with the split end, of course. We want him to split to do the job. Obviously, he's tighter if it's an outside cut, he's wider if it's an inside cut. We look at hash marks, we don't want the split end any closer than four yards to the sideline. Okay, yada, yada. This is not a receiver talk, obviously. <clears throat> but we want to talk horizontal splits where two feet. It spreads the defense enough that we can trap them. Oh, we, we, don't want to, we don't want to condense that defensive front. Heck, I want to run buck trap till the cows come home, and I want to run cross block belly. I want to keep two foot splits and be consistent and have integrity and character with my horizontal uh, alignment. Vertical alignment, undercoached, understressed. Gentlemen, please, get your people back off the ball. Don't line up crowding the football. I know certain systems want to do that. That's good for their system. <clears throat> get your rear ends back off the ball. We line up according to federation regulations. And I don't know any states in the union, maybe there are some, I haven't been everywhere, that, that don't go with federation. Our guards are taught, schooled, it's stressed to them, and, and sometimes I get, my eyeballs bulge out teaching them this one. Guards have got to line up off the football such that the tip of their headgear <clears throat> breaks that plane drawn through the center's waist. So that when you look from a sideline at our football team when they're lined up, our guards, tackles, and ends are lined up in straight line. The center is out in front of them. The guards' headgear, the tip of their headgear, you can, it, they break the plane of the center's waist. So when the guard lines up, the tackle lines up on him. When the tackle lines up, the ends or receivers line up on the tackles. That gives us time. Golly, I can't emphasize this enough. This, this, is, this is sacred stuff with wing T people. We want time and space to utilize our footwork. If we're pulling, we want time to use our footwork so the defense can't get to us. If we're releasing, uh, walling linebackers off on our trapping game, we want to keep away from those defensive linemen that are supposed to impede our progress in walling off those linebackers. We're back off the ball. It gives us time and space to utilize our footwork. You got to do it or, you, or you're going to run into problems conceptually in executing the things we, we execute. For instance, and I know I'm getting, I'm getting rather anal with this one. If our tackle is to block down on a two or a three technique and he is crowding the ball, he is not allowing himself vertical spacing, he's going to have a tougher time blocking down on that 205 pound two or three technique that's, that's quicker than scat. Back your kids back up off the ball. Now they got time and space to block down. That tackle who you think, oh boy, what are we going to do with that kid? Can he play? Oh boy, I don't know if he can block down. He hasn't got great feet. Give him some better feet by backing the heck off the ball. Now he has time and space to block down. I can't emphasize it enough. So uh, I just wanted to spend a second there talking about our alignment. It is, it is, it's integral to our attack principles. I'm going to start out running buck sweep to the weak side. I think it's a great football play. It's a staple wing tee play. Uh, it, it, is, uh, it is such a stressful football play on a, on a defense because of the angles we're putting our kids in. Uh, as most of you uh, viewing this know, uh, it is uh, accompanied by uh, Buck Trap and Waggle, Sister Plays. It is, it is Ultimate Conflict Series, provide, provide problems and dual responsibilities for, for defense. Uh, it's that kind of football, as you know. And uh, as you can see, we're, we're going to have our slot blocking down on first defender inside. We're going to have our tackle to the play side doing the same thing. Our guard has deep pull kicking out perimeter support. And when we're going to the weak side, we have no tight end. So our spread end will get a nice big split and try to run that corner off or stalk them, turn them out, do something to help augment that running lane. But the guard is kicking out perimeter force. He's kicking out the first defender outside the slot utilizing deep pull technique. And to coach you a little on this, 
Our, our, our guard has got to kick out with left shoulder when he's kicking out left. So we have a rule, left shoulder left. This puts his head upfield. It takes away the possibility of that support player, you know, that, that anchor linebacker or that strong safety, whatever people want to call him. That guard takes away the ability of that support guy to come over the top and spill the play. So to the left, we are kicking out with left shoulder, head upfield. Let him run around the block. Nobody teaches that, and it's poor fundamental football for him to run around blocks. For him to cross our face would cause problems for us. So we school and teach and reemphasize that to our guards. Kicking out left, left shoulder. Kicking out right, obviously right shoulder. The quarterback's alignment now is, has got to be taught and, and again, I like to include these teaching points as I'm throwing plays out there. Nobody wants to just watch plays. That's boring. Here's a play. Here's a play. I like to technique, teach, demonstrate, and I want you to know why we're doing certain things, and I want you to get the nuts and bolts and nitty-gritty of this great wing T system. The quarterback's alignment on all play selections, just his regular alignment, he's got to understand that our linemen are recessed back off the ball. Vertical alignment. So the quarterback, when he looks to his left and right, if he's crowding the center when he takes the hand up, he's going to find out he's even with the guards if the guards are truly back off the ball, as we just mentioned. The quarterback has got to extend his arms a little bit under the butt of the center and back his feet and his rear end up back. So if I can show you this as you're looking from the sideline, if, if I am the quarterback trying to take the ball from the center, I don't want to be up under that center crowding the heck out of that poor kid. When I look to the left, whoa, there's the guard. There's the guard. I want to back up a little bit and extend my arms, not awkwardly, in a healthy, comfortable way so that I can get my feet back because I know my guards pull all the time. And I, I wish I had a dime for every time a guy told me, Hey, our guards keep running into our quarterback. Your guards are running into your quarterback probably because your quarterback is crowding the center. Extend your arms, quarterback. Back up a couple inches so when you get the hand up, boom, you can get the heck out of the way and the guards don't run you over. It's a classic problem with the wing tee. Back up. Quarterback alignment is very important on every play selection. Slot alignment on this. By rule, our wings... In relation to a tight end, our wing's outside leg is two yards from the outside leg of the tight end. Let me repeat that. Our wing's outside legs, the outside leg, is two yards wide of the outside leg of the tight end. We do this to stress the defensive end. One of the things we want to do is put a defensive end, as a guy I used to work for used to say, and it was very descriptive, and I've always remembered this in my old age. We want to put that defensive end halfway between a piss and a sweat. We want that defensive end to feel pressure. We want our tight end to be split three feet, if I didn't mention that before. He's different than the tackles and guards. Tight end split is three feet, and the wing, his outside leg, is two yards wide of the tight end's outside leg. This stresses the defensive end or the outside backer, or whatever the heck you want to call them in our big fancy terminology world of football now. There's so many darn names for guys, I can't keep track of them. Heck, he's a defensive end, look at him. He's a perimeter contained guy on the line of scrimmage. Stress him, get that wing spread out there. Well, coach, you know, I really can't block down on him from there. My wings can't get there. You're back off the ball. The wings alignment will also be two yards deep of the football. So as the wing lines up, the nose of the wingback is two yards deep of the football as well. So he has time and space to block down on one of those defensive ends. I must tell you, in coaching this for, since Adam wore sandals, that wingbacks have got to be willing to block. I have a lot of guys that will tell me, well, you know, our running backs just won't block. Well, then you can't run the wing tee, in my opinion. Then, then you have to start bastardizing and start running wing pistol or wing spread or wing ding, or wing whatever the heck they want to call it. If you're running the wing T, your backs have got to be sold on the responsibility to block for each other. And, and I might be pie in the sky, idealistic, old fart mentality, but I have always told our wings, 
If you want to carry it, you block for your teammate first. Then I'm more likely to give it to you. I'm not going to say that I haven't handed off to a specifically, uh, a particularly good running back more than kind of a blocking type running back. I can't say I haven't done that. I'm not totally stupid. But I always have sold to my kids, you need to block for your teammates or we can't be functional. Be a selfless football player. It's not about you, it's about us. Make your teammate look better and then the, the possibility or probability of him playing hard for you and making you look better is better. So block for each other. You gotta have kids willing to stick their shoulder in there and get some movement and sprint their knees. So, wings, let's be football players and block. And we want to stress that defensive end with our alignment. That being said, the weak side slot, when he block, blocks down on buck sweep, he'll never get there if he, is, if he is wide according to a ghost tight end. By that I mean, obviously, the weak side slot, he has no tight end. He has to line up as if there were a tight end in his standard slot alignment. So I, I've experimented with this forever, and this is what it ends up being. Without a tight end, the slot's alignment will put his outside leg three and a half yards wide of the tackle's outside leg. I'll repeat it again. Without a tight end, the weak side wing, or what we call slot, his alignment, his outside leg is three and a half yards wide of the left tackle's left leg. Now, he'll never block down from that alignment on that end. I know what you're thinking. But in order to have integrity with, with motion, in order so that our left wing, if he has to go in motion to the right, in, in order for him to be in sync and in phase with the quarterback, we've got to keep that wing in, in a position as if a tight end were there unless we're running weak side sweep. The play I have shown here, we cheat that slot in a couple feet to his comfort so he can, in fact, block down. Remember, he's two yards deep. We're not going to have him three and a half yards wide when he's blocking down. We do bastardize this a little bit, and we do let him cheat. I hate to say the word cheat, but we just tell him, you know, you're not going to line up the same way on every play. People on defense won't know you're blocking down. There's going to be some plays when you misalign just because you're a human being and you make an error in your alignment through the course of a hot, sticky Friday night. But when he's blocking down, he's got to cheat a little tighter to make the block down on that five technique. I'm not, I'm not totally pie in the sky, Pollyanna. I know things that are possible and impossible in running this system. Cheat inside, then you can block down a little better. And if you have a willingness to block, and you'll get your head in front, because that's what we teach on gap block, head in front on gap block. So if you're the left slot blocking down, you're hitting with your left shoulder, given the nice strong wind up, striking that surface that we do with our, with our shoulder progression skills, and uh, you got a good chance to make that block. I would say this in fi finality with Buck Sweep. <clears throat> the, the center and fullback have got to understand they are area blockers. The center's job, as you can see, snap the ball, jump your fanny into the A-gap. The fullback will accordingly take the backside A-gap. A lot of people end up making errors here and leaving gaps when the center wants to reach and run upfield and when the fullback wants to take his buck trap fake and run upfield to block a linebacker. I, I am anal about this as well, as I am with everything with the wing tee. Center, you got the front side A gap. Puff up, stay square shouldered, sit down low, get big. You got the front side A gap, no matter what the heck happens. The fullback does the same thing in the backside A-gap at the line of scrimmage. That's how we would run buck sweep to the weak side. Our backside guard must pull, and gradually, when he gets through the quarterback box, get a little bit of depth, and we lock him up with the onside linebacker. When he breaks the huddle and runs to the line of scrimmage, he's eyeballing the play side inside backer. That's his guy, and he will pull with the intention of sealing him and keeping him out of the running lane. Because the front side guard, of course, is kicking out and making the running lane. The backside tackle is the touchdown maker. He inside releases, and he gets to the point of attack, hoping to create a, a further walling off so that our running back will cut right behind his fanny and get upfield. Notice how our running back is in motion. We want him at the backside cheek 
of the tackle, the backside tackle, at the crack of the seat of the pants of the backside tackle when the ball is snapped. We want him running through the heels of the vacated fullback as he takes the handoff from the quarterback, and we want the running back to create the illusion that he is going to outrun the secondary. As he does, and support comes up, we kick out and we cut on a dime. We love to teach a 90-degree right angle as he plants his outside leg, gathers his feet, sinks his hips, and gets his fanny headed north and south right now. That, that's as detailed as I can get in teaching buck sweep. We run it to the weak side to stay away from those people that want to gang up on our tight end wing. We sure as heck are going to run buck trap if we're running buck sweep. I've already mentioned that. Well, I'm a series guy. I'm not a grab bag guy. Please out there, if you're looking at this or if you're thinking of running the wing T or the wing T is being, you know, stumped a little bit here and there, don't be a grab bag guy. Don't run, don't start running John Madden or Al Michaels' popular plays of Monday night. Don't do that. Run our system and find ways to solve problems in our system. Run series-oriented football. Provide conflict for defenses. Buck trap's a good example of that. To the weak side, if I'm running buck trap, as you can see, I'm going to double that nose or that shade. And I've obviously got this drawn so that we're trapping the, the, biggest, the biggest bubble. But I'm going to spend my left guard and center on that shade, whether he's a nose or a shade. And I'm going to release my left tackle up underneath that linebacker looking at the backside backer and taking care of most dangerous threat. My guard's rule is to trap the first threat past the football. He is trapping first guy past the football. Uh, I, I, I am on our guards all the time about, uh, you're not trapping a guy, you are trapping an area, whoever the heck shows up in that area. You are trapping with your left shoulder when you're going left. You are trapping with your right shoulder when you're going right. And I teach it and preach it, and I'm on them like, like a cheap suit about proper trap angle. Get up into the line of scrimmage. Rub, rub butts with the power blockers as you are trapping. Because we know that people who are on defense will close when they perceive the scheme in front of them is going to be trap. How about, how about this? You know, you're on, a, you're on a Friday night. Anybody out there ever heard this? Close! Close! Everyone on defense is yelling close from the sideline when a trap is coming. Coaches teach it on defense. Heck, these guys on defense coach too. We think we're out there running the wing tee against air. People on defense are good. They coach their people. We got to be better. I want to be on a proper, tight, inside out, rubbing butts with the power blockers type of trap angle so that I can preclude the possibility of that man closing and squeezing and wrong arming me or spilling me. That's what we teach those guards. So the guard can't be overcoached. It's so important that the guard has proper technique. Line coaches out there demand detail and technique. This is what really helps this football play. Slot influence. On buck sweep, the slot blocked down on that five technique. We've gone over that. Now the slot steps at that defensive end as if he's going to block down. He's sending, the, he's sending the perceptual and physical message that I'm blocking down on you. We want to create the need for that end to widen, if, if not physically, at least mentally widen so that that enables the guard to, to be a better trapper. So, you know, with the wing tee, it's so fun. We are, we are putting people in conflict. That defensive end doesn't know, is it sweep, is it trapping? We don't want him to know. That's his problem. We're running the darn wing T. Slot influence cannot be overemphasized. I'm going to step down at that end. I'm going to eyeball him. And as soon as I get to his fanny, I'm going to go around him and help wall off the linebacker level to help that trap. Well, we have motion. The motion is, uh, is, is, is set so that on the snap of the ball, you're at the backside crack of your right tackle's uh, rear end. Uh, you are going to run sweep fake. The fullback has the midline. The quarterback will open up to the sweep fake. He will open up to the sweep fake. Uh, he gets off the midline slightly, and the fullback has slipped the ball with a sleight of hand wing T technique that we all teach. The quarterback, after handing off, will continue to fake waggle as he did on buck sweep. And again, the right half is faking sweep. He, he's, bar he's barrel button, man. He's, he's running like heck to try to convince people he's running sweep. 
I, I have to tell you something that I learned from uh, a great, great football coach. And I, I hope I'm not coming off like a name dropper here. I, that's not my purpose in mentioning names. I want to be honest with you. I thought of none of this. But I've borrowed and darn well stole from people who I've listened to at clinics and people who I, I just have placed my confidence in, and I'm so happy they were willing to share and let me take from them. Danny Roshar, who is now at Michigan State, heck, Danny's been everywhere. Danny was the running back coach at Illinois, and he taught a tremendous technique in, in trying to convince people that, that you had the football, faking. Here's all Danny did. It's so darn simple. It's great. And I teach it like crazy. Number one, when you're faking, break the line of scrimmage with your fake. That running back on Buck Trap, the guy that's faking sweep, he's not going to have his fake evaporate once the quarterback and he exchange fakes with the mesh at the hip. He's going to run like gangbusters, and he's going to carry out his fake, and he's going to break the line of scrimmage with his fake before he turns around and finds out that it's second and two. So break the line of scrimmage with your fakes. It's, it's easy to administrate that. You know, you might say, well, you didn't fake well enough. Well, why? You didn't break the line of scrimmage with your fake. I know where the heck the line of scrimmage was. You gave me a two-step fake. That don't cut it with the wing tee. Let's go, buddy. Be unselfish. This is about us, not you. You want me to hand the ball off to you next play? Give me a fake right now. The other thing that Danny taught was that when you are carrying out a fake, and I'll try to do it for you here just to let you see. I've had kids in the past say they're carrying their fake out because they're running like heck. They're breaking the line of scrimmage with their fake. And then I'm on them like a cheap suit once again, say, hey, that's not a good fake. Come on, buddy, be a better salesman than that. And they're wondering what I'm talking about. When I listen to Danny, now they don't wonder what I'm talking about because I'm selling them on Danny's technique. Danny taught that if you are faking like you have the ball in your right hand, don't be running up the field like this. Heck, my wife knows you haven't got the ball. You know what I mean? And, she, and she's not on the staff. Grab the shirt. Grab your fiber to the side that you're faking. Now, I got a little better chance of faking you now. Maybe you know I haven't got the ball now, but I've grabbed that shirt, and it looks a little more like I'm carrying something rather than this. Coach, I'm running full speed. Terrible fake. Coach, I'm running full speed. Well, now i got to look at you twice. Looks like you're carrying something over there. Might be the ball. Uh, so thank you, Danny, for teaching me that at a clinic at the Chicago Catholic League many, many moons ago. I have to tell you about a center guard adjustment you might have to make on trap. If we're running against uh, the old Oklahoma 52, everything fits in great. You know, not many people are doing that anymore. They're giving you shades, reductions, stacks. People are all over the darn place, you know? Gap responsibilities. Okay. Uh, I, would, I would teach this, center guard adjustment. Now, teach it from the get-go so your center can communicate. If you're running buck trap left, and now the center has a bona fide two or three technique, the center has to block back on him. On the previously seen uh, uh, diagram, I had a, a very wide three, almost like a four-eye technique, which we were asking the backside tackle to cut off which is tough to do, but remember, we're back off the ball. We got time and space to use our footwork, and we got a better chance of doing it if we're back off the ball. As soon as that, as we look at it, the fellow opposite the right guard, the two or three technique, when he becomes a two or three, the center has to full goal block back on him and communicate that with whatever communication system you have. We call that an even adjustment for the center. He comes up and goes, even, 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 and that tells the left guard, you're blocking the shade yourself because i got to block back on a two or a three. And now the right guard pulls and traps and everything else is good, and the right tackle can work his way up to linebacker level. But you got to get ready for those little shade adjustments there. Wanted to make sure you saw that because, uh, you know, when I go to a clinic and I see these guys pie in the sky me up there with diagrams, I always have a lot of questions. And uh, I want that to be a question you don't have. I wanted to cover that with you when you're running trap. I'm going to run cross block belly till the cows come home. What a great football play in the wing tee. And, and it's a part of the staple weak side package. It's, it's one of those things I'm sure if you're running the wing tee, you already run weak side cross block belly. But I'm sure going to emphasize it because it's a big, big deal for us when we're doing it. We're going to cross block an even front, as you see, with the uh, tackle and guard. Tackle, you're executing gap technique. Uh, guard, you're trapping. When you trap to the left, Already set it on buck trap. You're trapping with the left shoulder, so your head is upfield in the running lane to stop that end from closing and spilling. 
we know that defensive ends, hell, everyone teaches this. When you see your man block down, close, squeeze, wrong arm, condense, limit it. Okay. We, we want that guard to be inside out so he can kick that thing out no matter how that end squeezes and closes. And we've got some answers for that if that end wants to close. You know, we're running the wing tee. We're not grab bagging. I'm not. Hope you're not. I have answers. You have answers. Tubby had answers for guys who want to squeeze as defensive ends when, when their man blocks down. Anyway, we're going to fold the backside on an even front. The center will block back, and the guard will execute gut or fold technique, what Delaware, the old Delaware people would call gut, to try to create a backside running lane for the fullback if need be. The backside tackle reaches. The backside tight end will step and cup to try to, uh, to, to provide uh, a read for us if he's getting heavy backside defensive end rush. That, that tight end will be able to tell us, hey, tight end screen is open because that end is pinning his ears back and coming like a banshee. That's a horse of a different color. But we're going to do that with the tight end to set up tight end screen if he's getting an all-out rush by the defensive end. The slot must go up through the cross block and lead on that linebacker. Uh, now, th this is a technique that's got to be taught a little bit. And I, if you don't mind looking at my rear end, I'll show you this. Now, a lot of people that say, Coach, we don't run cross block belly out of slot. We can't get to the linebacker. Watch it. People who think you only run standard wing tee formations with a dive back there, they'll, they'll limit you because they, they'll know. When you got a dive back, you run cross, cross block belly. When you don't have a dive back, you don't run cross block belly. Don't give them that tendency advantage. We're going to run it. That left slot, when he lines up, and my outside leg, again, is three and a half yards wide of that naked tackle without a tight end next to him. All I'm going to do is open step, put my toe to the bench, look at the cross block, take a second step, and I'm going to wind up right through the cross block. It's not rocket science. I have so many people that have said, Coach, we can't get there. We run into people, blah, blah, blah. OK, look, check your alignment. Are you lined up too tight? Then you're getting there too quick. Are you lined up too wide? Then you're not going to get there. Be deliberate, but don't be slow. I would give this advice. Your inside leg is staggered back anyway. You're a wing T running back, right? You're a wing. You're a slot. First step cannot be at a 45 degree angle. You'll beat the cross block. Tackle blocks down, guard kicks out. Look, point that toe at the bench. Second step, follow it, then wind yourself up through the cross block. We don't get a big red hiney if a kid doesn't do this right at first. I might do something as simple as you're getting there too quickly. Check your alignment. You're not getting there quick enough. Check your alignment. Check your footwork. And, and this is a high repetition system, the wing tee. You know, it's high reps. You work it out. But it's a good key breaker for people that look at your formation. You've got to run cross block belly out of slot, in my opinion, to be a key breaker for formations. I might go to a, a little bit of a reach adjustment on the backside if I get people blitzing through gaps and everything. So that backside fold is not gospel. We might just decide to play it safe. Center reach, guard reach. So that fold is not something etched in stone. Just thought I'd show it to you because we do it, and, I, and a lot of people do. Uh, you might have a base block adjustment as well. If the left guard ends up with a two eye or a fellow sitting in the A gap, then obviously the left tackle doesn't have to block down on him. We just might have what we call a base block adjustment. Uh, the guard blocks the man on his inside. The tackle blocks the defensive end in a five technique on his outside. And it's like uh, the parting of the Red Sea and Moses runs up through there. They couldn't be playing it better for us when we're running cross block belly. So I always tell the kids, don't block down on a guy who doesn't need to be blocked down on. If the guard feels like, hey, I got this guy myself, you know, either I can just blast him because I'm better or he's lined up in an inside shade, a two eye. Or, or a one-eye or an A-gap responsibility, call base, 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 and just be Moses and blast your fanny up in there. The quarterback obviously takes the ball. He reverses out over to the mid, over the midline. And if we're using clock system here as we do, 12 o'clock as a quarterback, I'm looking at it. 6 o'clock is to my crack of the rear end. So I'm going to reverse out, clock being as everybody knows it. Heck, everybody knows the clock. 
I'm reversing out on cross block belly left. My first step, I'm reversing out to seven o'clock. My second step is taken in a way where I know my fullback steps. Fullback steps, can't be undercoached. Don't rush fullback. When I was a young coach, I knew nothing about fullback steps and I couldn't understand why our cross black belly was so darn unproductive. Ah, it was coaching, it was me. I've learned from good people now and I copied the heck out of them. Fullback steps. Be patient. Don't race horse. Make the quarterback bring you the ball. Here you go. Slide. Slide. It's a slide step. It's a crossover, keeping your shoulders square. And now square up, and you are gaining no appreciable distance upfield in those three movements. Slide, crossover, square up. Make the quarterback bring you the ball. Remember, you have a cross block that demands a bit of timing. You have a lead back that demands a bit of timing. And for you, you have a possibility of cutting back for you. So don't rush and racehorse cross block belly. I know some people even back their fullbacks up a little bit to give them a little bit more time because they got these kids that want to, you know, I'm an eye guy. I want to blast it up in there. No, you're not. You're a wing tee fullback. I know back east they call you an eye back or a tailback. They're trying to make you feel good. You're a wing tee fullback. Be patient with your feet. You got to run belly and down, okay? We need you to be a, a, a bulwark up in there and smash up in tackle to tackle. Have good belly steps and it'll help you on this. I got power to the weak side too. I'm obviously running it to a flank where, you know, even I can run my big rear end up through that hole. But um, hey, you know, part of being a smart football coach is uh, running where they ain't. I'm going to run power where it is. And I'm going to run power where I'm running sweep for this reason. It's a conflict with buck sweep. That defensive end and five technique that's been blocked down on by my slot. And once again, come on, running backs. Get a little hard nose, buddy. You know, hey, come on. Let's go. You got to block once in a while. I want that defensive end, five technique, to think the slot is blocking down on him. I want to create the mental image that that end has to get with. Whether the end gets with physically or mentally, I want him to hear me, to feel me breathing down his neck as a slot like I'm blocking down on him on buck sweep. I step right to him. We've even taught our slots from year to year to brush influence the end. Just give him a little forearm in the rear end as you go by. Just reach out your elbow and just click shoulder pads with him to make him think you're blocking down on him. And then wall off the linebacker. You set up a good fullback kick out by doing that. The fullback kick out is drawn. He is going to kick out with his left shoulder. He's using guard trap principle on contact. Kicking out to the left, left shoulder. It puts your head up field and it puts your head in the running lane so the end is less likely to cross face on you and spill you. Remember, the end is looking at that offensive tackle releasing inside. He may have a tendency to close. Or if the slot is influencing him, will he have a tendency to widen? That's his problem. We'll run in the wing tee. It's a classic wing tee conflict. It's a dual responsibility. Gentlemen in the audience, Run plays that provide defensive conflict for those suckers on defense. Don't let them, don't grab bag and run most popular plays. Run package football and provide conflict. The fullback will kick out. Now, I know lines get all over the place with wing T, and I've tried to draw these things as best I can. I'm not a PowerPoint guy. I'm not a guy who's in there drawing these straight lines and robotic looking deals. It's not realistic. I'm not a PowerPoint diagram guy. The left guard blocks down inside. The center blocks back to free up the guard who's pulling through the running lane with tight pulling technique. He wants to get up hugging the power block of the center and left guard. Get up there and give us a tight seal so you can block linebacker level. The fullback again kicks out and now the running back is running a banana type course. And I've got the running back running much too shallow. He, in general, will run a little deeper towards the fullback level, closer to three and a half or four yards, as he gets a handoff from the quarterback who's busting his tail to get off the midline and hand off to the right hip of that right halfback, who's obviously in motion to get to the crack of the tackle, as always. The receiver is stalking, or maybe we have him cracking on free if we think we need an extra blocker there. It depends on what the secondary is doing, what their concept is. But we're going to run that power. And, and um, let, let me show you something on full, fullback technique. Once again, 
I'm, I'm trying to teach weak side package of the wing tee because too many of us go to the tight end all the time. But I, I can't teach this by X and an O. I got to show you. I got to teach technique or I'm not being fair to you. I, don't, I don't really don't feel like I'm doing a good job unless I coach technique and I'm, I'm trying like heck to do a good job. Fullback technique. I'm kicking out to the left. I got to get inside out. I have found the best way to do it is to step first with your backside foot straight ahead on the midline to put you on that inside out. It puts you on the inside out. I think if I step with my play side foot, then I gotta get all the way across with my backside foot. It's, it's not time efficient, it's wasted motion. It's not very efficient physically. I'm gonna step first with my backside foot, get inside out, and now <clears throat> I'm pinning my ears back, and I'm gonna left shoulder left that guy and put him in the nickel seats. I'm going to wind up and strike a nice firm shoulder surface with my left arm and left upper chest and shoulder pad. So if I'm running buck sweep week, I'm going to run power week. It's classic conflict football. It's another halfback running play for you that you might want to use if you're running weak side offense. I will. Boy, what a great addition to the wing tee package these fellows back east uh, put in. I can't tell you who first started running jet sweep. I know the Delaware guys did. I, I know a guy at, at Widener, Billy Zwan, did. I know tons of guys did, and the Moravian guys did it. I'm sure Rocky Reese did it. Uh, jet Sweep is a dynamic, forceful, uh, almost overwhelming football play and stressful football play to the weak side flank if you're running it correctly. Uh, and it's, uh, it's as easy as, uh, heck, you're not blocking a heck of a lot of guys. It's as easy as one, two, three. It's like taking candy from a baby if you can get three or four things done real well. Blocking rules on jet sweep, weak side. Tackle is blocking first guy outside the B gap. I have the end there and the number one over his head. Tackle is reaching number one outside the B gap. The slot is blocking number two. The split end's blocking number three. If there's a number four guy outside the B gap, we ain't running it that way. We're going the other way. This ain't Canada. They only got 11 guys. We're not going to run into that kind of a scheme. So tackle, slot, and end, clearly defined. Reach one, two, and three. Now, we tell that tackle, if you're reaching a guy who's unreachable, one of those guys who's playing real wide and he won't get reached, reach and run. Run him into the sideline. We change that assignment or adjust it simply by wording this, reach and run. Reach and run. We'll cut up underneath you if he doesn't want to be reached. But that's the assignment you have. We're not blocking the two or three. He ain't going to make the play the way it times up. We're pulling that guard to wall off the play side inside backer, whoever he may be. We're pulling that guard to wall off. A lot of people have said, well, man, you, gotta, you can't pull that guard on that. You know, on toss sweep or jet, you can't pull him. Uh, you can't afford to keep him in, I'm here to tell you. Fellas, you can't afford to keep him in. That two or three ain't going to make the play. And if he is making the play, come back and run jet trap and trap his fanny and keep his fanny honest. He ain't making the play. Pull your guard. The center, right guard, right tackle, and tight end are all releasing to the running lane. They're not blocking anybody at the line of scrimmage. They're releasing laterally, and they're pinning their ears back, and they're getting their fannies upfield as fast as they can to help with any secondary pursuit here. Okay, quarterback, big job. When you take the hand up from center, you're going to reverse out to the point where your butt is in the A-gap. And I know some people, people even add a little piece of footwork in there. I know that the great Chuck Clossing, uh, from, from Kiskey Prep in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Any of you guys that are running the wing out there, you know the name Chuck Clossing. Chuck will teach a little shuffle step by his quarterback to get him assured into the A-gap. Uh, I've just never done it. It's one more thing I don't want to give the quarterback to do. I, I've had success with the quarterback opening up and just getting, getting way the heck over there to 9 o'clock and placing his fanny in the A-gap because we're telling Jet, the running back, according to Cadence, that he needs to be at the right guard's butt at the snap of the ball. In other words, the backside guard is where you are at the snap of the ball. And you're running. You, you are a jet. They didn't call this thing bulldozer, and they didn't call this thing pickup truck. They called it jet. you got to be a jet. I want a kid who's going to pin his ears back, get those arms moving, and his fanny is flat-ass flying. And at the backside guard, that's where the ball is snapped. 
He will take the, rece oh, the reception of the football from the quarterback will take place at the right hip, and he will gain about a yard of depth after clearing that quarterback box. I've, got, I've not got it drawn exactly the way I want it. Soon as that jet gets the ball, he's going to gain about a yard to get around any junk that might have penetrated, you know, out of the out of the ordinary. And we didn't plan for any junk to be there, but sometimes junk shows up, you know. You know how it goes. And we want him to get out to the hash mark. This is not buck sweep. This is toss sweep kind of principle. This is outrun him sweep. This is outflank him, get out there and run all the way up the sideline for a touchdown technique if that's what it is, if everyone's making their blocks. So once again, quarterback, landmark, put your butt in the A gap. Jet, <clears throat> be at the backside guard at the snap of the ball. When you get the ball at your right hip, if you're running jet left, gain a yard of depth and then get outside to the hash mark and outrun everybody. Now, if people are stringing you and number one is unreachable and the slot is having trouble with a strong safety who's trying to be a contained guy, keeping his outside arm free, that's good football. That's when you make a cut and you get whatever the heck you can up inside. So quarterback and halfback have their techniques. The snap of the ball occurs when, when the wing or the slot, the jet, is at the backside guard. Now, a lot of people fold the inside here. They'll take the center and block back, and they'll fold the right guard just like you were running gut. And they're going to do that because they will run jet gut to stop that two or three technique play side who, who is, who is uh, running into the backfield being a nuisance. But that's all Jet is. It's, Jet is pretty simple. I'm not a rocket guy, and, and I'm not a rocket guy because I think Jet is more versatile. If you're running Jet, you can now run Jet Trap for people who aren't honest inside. You can run Jet Cross Block Belly for people who are bailing on you when they see Jet. You can run Jet Down to the tight side. You can run Jet Waggle. You can run a whole bunch of stuff to complement jet sweep if, if you're good at jet sweep. I just think it's more versatile than rocket. It may not be as dynamic or as stressful, but there's more stuff you can do with jet sweep, so I, I just have to become kind of a jet believer. So here we go. If I'm running jet sweep, I'm going to run jet cross block belly. I, I've seen this personally. Uh, none of the stuff I'm telling you here is based on uh, I, I think this will happen or this will be a good clinic talk. Uh, I may not be real smart or real good, but I got experience. I've been doing this forever, and in my experience, I have seen this. As soon as jet starts coming, when you have established jet sweep, as soon as jet starts coming, the five technique starts widening. I've seen it happen. Here comes jet, and Mr. Five Technique all of a sudden becomes a seven, and there isn't any tight end there. He widens because he's tired of being beat on the perimeter. That's when you have to be one step ahead of the posse, and you have to have cross-block belly in with jet motion. So now you can envision what's happening. Look at this. Block down, kick out. The end's widening anyway. Here comes jet. Everybody else is executing cross-block belly action. We've changed one man. For you people that don't have jet in, jet changes things for one man. Jet cross block, all you're doing is running jet motion. You're not running standard three deep motion, standard Delaware motion through the fullback's heels. You're not doing it. You're running jet. Here's, here's what jet has to know. You've got to be a little, little earlier now because as the ball is snapped, the quarterback is reversing out to 7 o'clock to get the ball nice and deep to the fullback, as we just talked about 10 minutes ago. If jet is at the backside cheek, of the backside guard on the snap, you'll run right into the quarterback. So, hey, Jet, you got to be smart enough to know it's, it's belly. i got to be a hair earlier. So what we ask you to do is be right behind the quarterback now on Jet cross block. It, it, it happens so quickly, people are not going to say, hey, Jet hasn't got the ball. His landmark's different. Hey, he's Jet. He's flying. His ears are pinned back, and he's flat rear end flying. Be behind the quarterback on the snap of the ball. Get deeper than the slot who's blocking, because we're asking you to get a little deeper after you get the ball anyway. And, and, and look, Jet, you're faking Jet Sweep. Get your hand to that outside hip, as Danny Roshar said at the University of Illinois 15 or 20 years ago, and fake like heck, get upfield, break the line of scrimmage. We are running cross-block 
belly. Now, in addition to this, if, if, if again, and I'm being, I'm being a bit repetitive, but in addition to jet sweep and cross block belly, run jet trap. Take care of that two or three technique that wants to barrel butt up field and stop your jet sweep. Trap them or finesse them. Run trap or gut. Run jet waggle. If you're running jet sweep, it figures you'll run jet waggle. It, it, it's wing T principle. You run, run a buck sweep, run waggle. Are you running jet sweep? Run jet waggle. Uh, uh, trap, waggle, sweep, uh, cross block belly, and I'm sure there's some other weak side things you can do in there. I'm just not thinking of them today. But, uh, but have a, have a complement of things with jet because it, it, it just changes things for one guy, and that is jet, and he can handle that. Your linemen don't even have to know what the heck jet means when they hear jet trap. It has nothing to do with them. But uh, your jet guy just has to be a little quick and make sure he understands the significance of the positioning of his motion. I'm going to run cross-block belly option, too. If, I, if I'm running cross-block belly and I have a quarterback with any feet at all, I'm, I'm going to keep the defense honest by running uh, cross-block belly option. Uh, as you can see, all we're doing now is we are logging a defensive end who is tired of getting kicked out on cross-block belly. So close, close. Okay, go ahead and close. We're going to log you. If we get from the press box or from a kid on the field or from pregame scouting from the week before, the defensive ends for that particular organization are closing like heck with down blocks, then we know it's going to be a big buck sweep week. We know it's going to be a big cross block belly option week because the guard now will wrong arm the end, hit him with his right shoulder on a tighter type course, get his head outside, and he'll log the defensive end. Everybody else is reaching, tight end, step and cup, set up, backside, belly, screen. Because that, that's a part of the package. But it's to the strong side, so I'm not doing it right now. Okay? Split end, stock. Split yourself real big. Get that darn corner the heck out of here. Block him with a split. Block him with the way you line up. And then jump inside him and keep him outside. We're optioning the toughest guy to block. And that would be the strong safety or the outside back, or whatever you want to call him. I have him circled or, uh, you know, kind of encircled in green here. So we're putting conflict into the defensive end. Block down and run cross block belly, he's closing. Block down, and if you got a quarterback with any kind of feet at all that you'd like to see get outside a little bit and get him to be a more, more part of your offense, uh, log the end and get out and get in a 2-1-1 -one -one relationship with the strong safety. We, we make a nice quick poke fake ride with the fullback. The fullback blasts up through the cross block to try to impede the progress of one linebacker or the other. Your slot is doing the same thing. He's running to linebacker level to impede flow of linebackers. Let's face it, it's a full flow play. There's no misdirection at all holding anybody. The only one that will hold someone is the fullback if he's any good and he fakes. Maybe the backer's got to stutter step a little bit, but wall him off, fullback. Your wing has standard three-step motion, and we want to get him to a two-by-five relationship with the quarterback. But I, by that I mean you're five yards wide of the quarterback and you're two yards deep of the quarterback, two-by-five. Some guys say one-by-five, two-by-six, whatever you like. I've always run two-by-five, and it's, it's, it's not proven to be awful, it, it, um, so we, we still do it. Now, the conflict uh, with the defensive end is obvious. We will try like heck. If the fullback has no linebacker to worry about on his position, we try to work him up to the free safety because we're not blocking the free safety, as you can see. And we're not looking to option him. We're optioning the strong safety. So fullback and maybe slot, if you're unattended to, work on up to the free safety because he's going to be barrel button if he's good at all. There, there's nothing holding him. It's a full flow play. So, you know, we're going to run cross-block option if we're running cross-block to keep this thing wing T oriented and, and package football. Well, coach, my quarterback doesn't have very good feet. We don't run him. Okay, then don't run this. But if you got a kid, and we've all had him before, golly, I got a guy that's not a big thrower. Okay, well, hopefully he's got feet. Hopefully he can be a runner. Now, look, if he doesn't have feet and he doesn't have an arm, you might want to consider a position change. But if you got a guy who's got a little bit of giddy-up, cross-block option fits into the package. It's not a high-maintenance play at all, and it, it fits so very well. 
So cross block option, I am going to run to the weak side to continue to stay consistent with our weak side running game. Stay away from the tight end uh, lecture here. This is Headache City trying to teach on an overhead. I can only imagine doing this on a PowerPoint, so, but I'm not, a, I'm not a PowerPoint guy, so I don't have to imagine it any longer than two seconds. Counter crisscross is a wing T staple, and it is so fun. You can't afford not to run it, in my opinion. Kids love it. The kids love this. The crowd, mom loves it. Susie Q and her cheerleading pom-poms loves it. I love it. It's a great football play, <clears throat> and it's a sister play to power. If, if you are running, uh, let's see, if you are running a strong side power, uh, a sister play would be weak side counter crisscross. And I'm not talking about strong side stuff, but uh, mo people do run strong side power, full back kick out. So we're going to run counter crisscross as, as a counter to that. Here's all this is up front. I know there's lines all over the place, and you're getting a headache looking at it. I know some of you are saying, what the heck is that? I'll talk you through it, because there's too many people pulling all over the darn place. I mean, I can never draw this other than this way. Here you go. <clears throat> We're going to try to put two people at the point of attack. And against an even front with a three and a five, we're going to spend left guard and left tackle <clears throat> on that two or three and try to get lateral movement and try to knock that guy up into that linebacker level, that middle backer, so that the left tackle and left guard are responsible for the three technique and the middle backer, or if there's a two linebacker scheme, the backside linebacker, OK? Trying to get lateral movement. We're trying to post and lead that guy and blast his fanny into the next county. We're blocking back with the center to free the trapping guard up. I've got the right guard pulling and diagrammed, uh, and I know it looks disconnected, but he is tight to the power blockers, as we talked about before with Buck Trap a half hour ago. He is going to pull at a tight inside-out angle so that if Mr. Five Technique wants to close, he has a tough time doing it. I want to trap him with my left shoulder to the left. I want to dip, rip, be inside-out. Uh, I, I want to get inside out position and create a running lane for the running back. The backside tackle pulls through the hole. He's walling off, play side linebacker, whatever the heck off color jersey shows up outside of the post and lead by the guard and tackle to the left side. That's who the tackle has. The backside, the tight end, stepping and cupping, protect inside out. Now here's where we get cute. The quarterback's getting off the midline. Oh, man, he is fast off the midline, just like we're running power to the right. He's given the ball to the motioning slot. And slot, have integrity with your alignment. Don't line up too tight to the tackle's hip. There's no tight end there, son. If you're too tight to the tackle's butt, you will beat the quarterback and will have no initial handoff. This is an inside reverse. So to review, left slot. Your outside leg is three and a half yards wide of the outside leg of the left tackle. You're not blocking down on buck sweep, so you don't have to screw with that now, buddy. Be wide enough so when the quarterback gets you the ball and the quarterback's fighting his butt off to get off the midline, you get the ball to the left half, and he's running at pretty gosh darn controlled speed through the feet of that fullback who's filling backside, by the way. The fullback's filling. When that tackle pulls, the fullback's taking his place. And he and the center wall off the backside. That center's got to block back again to free up the guard. Here you go. Slot, you got the ball. You are carrying it to establish flow to the right. Now, the right wing, as you are on a four-yard level, left slot, the right wing will come across at three yards, at three yards, and take the handoff on your left hip and your rear end is flying up through the hole. And you're hugging the power blocks, by the way. This is a classic, classic wing T concept. Running backs, hug the power blockers. Don't pressure a trapper by running wide to the trapper. I have heard some backfield coach at lectures and on practice fields in different places in my greater than three decades of doing this stuff. I don't know how the heck I've hung in there as long as I'm not that smart. I just won't quit. I've heard a lot of backfield coaches teach, hey, get with the trapper. Follow the trapper. Don't follow the trapper. What if it's not a good trap? I'm putting my money on the left tackle and left guard who are posting and leading a three technique. Hug the power blocks. 
try to get upfield squared up towards the goalpost as fast as you can. Try to hit the line of scrimmage with square shoulders if you can do it, or close to square shoulders. Don't go wide and pressure the poor trapper. He may not get it. I am putting my money on the people blocking down. Hug the power blockers. Hug the power blockers. And the quarterback now is in pitch relationship with the running back. You're actually optioning the strong safety. Honest to goodness, I know some people might be saying, hey, this guy's full of baloney. I've done it a million times. I have, I have run counter crisscross, and the running back breaks the line of scrimmage. He gets up through the line, and support from the secondary comes to him. He just flips the ball to the quarterback. The quarterback's in sync with him. The quarterback is, is running pitch. You don't have any problem getting your quarterback to hustle on this play. He wants that doggone ball. He's busting his fanny to get around. It is the prettiest thing. It is the prettiest thing in football to run counter crisscross Break the line of scrimmage with your running back who's already gotten a handoff in misdirection fashion and having someone come out of coverage to him and he pitches the ball to the quarterback who races into the end zone. It is beautiful. Run counter crisscross. It's a great play. Everybody loves it. I even told you the women in the stands love it. It's conflict football. You'll love it. The kids want to run it every darn play if you let them and you can't. Run counter crisscross. It's a great weak side football play. We are obviously, with Buck Trap and Buck Sweep, going to run Waggle. I'm winding it down here. I thank you, gentlemen, for hanging in there with me. Or you ladies and gentlemen. I, I go to clinics, and, and there, there are, are ladies sitting in the, in the audience now. I, I want to make sure I, I give proper respects. Welcome, ladies. Uh, so coaches in the audience, we're obviously going to run Waggle. And uh, Waggle is uh, Waggle left is fake Buck Sweep right, right? We're a tackle on tackle. If it's an even front, we're blocking down. The left guard logs the end. If it's even, it's a shorter log, and it's an easier log. But you've got to try to log and get your head outside. We're hoping like heck we have those backside ends that are chasing on sweep. <laughs> they make it a heck of a lot easier to log them. If the center's covered, he's on. If he's not, he blocks back. The fullback is running through the A-gap to the flat. The split end has a primary route. I usually start out with post corner, but you can start doodadding around. As long as your fullback runs a complement to your split end, you're okay. The backside tight end against a uh, three deep is running a crossing route. If it's, if it's a two deep, we sometimes have that backside tight end split the safeties and run a, run a nice uh, vertically oriented post. The backside wing is outside releasing, stretching that to get someone's attention to, to take their attention off play side. And sometimes you get a throwback to him if you got enough time. But the quarterback will take the hand up. He will stay on the midline because the fullback's off the midline to the A-gap. The quarterback will execute sweep technique to the left half who executes sweep fake. And he's running like heck. The quarterback now will go about the progression you have him in. We usually look split end to fullback, but you might have a tight end you want to get the ball to. You might not have a tight end period. They're a rare breed these days. But the quarterback's going to be at, after his fake, he is going to be at six and a half, maybe seven yards depth at a max, gets his head and shoulders around, and he's running. Uh, he is executing a run-pass option. The backside guard has got to allow the fullback to clear to the flat, coaches. So the backside guard lets the fullback get out first. The backside guard does not hesitate. The backside guard, and I think I should demonstrate this, because this, this is another one of these classic problems that I'm asked from time to time. If you have a problem with this, please consider this. Ah, uh, the backside guard and fullback are always running into each other on waggle. And you're yelling at the fullback, and the fullback's yelling at the guard, and they're, they're in a big thing. Look, backside guard, you got to let the fullback out. I'm the right guard. Waggle left. As you pull, you cannot afford to pull flat and have your second step go right through the quarterback box. That's why you're bumping into the poor fullback. The fullback's got a bust butt to get out. He's going to block the A-gap if a defender shows up. And optimally, in a, in a beautiful world, he wants to get to the flat. But he's going, he's going heck bent for election into the flat, A-gap. Here you go, backside guard. This will solve your problems, because I've done it wrong first. Ha, I used to screw this up all the time, and finally I heard someone, I think Greg Perry taught it at a clinic back in the dark ages, and Greg squared us away. <clears throat> Here we go, backside guard. First step is flat. Boom, point your toe to the sideline. Second step gains depth. 
And that's one step you don't have to worry about gaining width, and that allows the fullback to clear. And now you're in position to be personal protector for the quarterback. Honest to goodness. Second step doesn't gain width. It gains depth backwards so the fullback can cross. One more time. One more time. Here we go. Backside guard. Okay, here we go. I got to get there. I'm the personal protector for the quarterback. Flat, gain depth. Let the fullback go. And now you don't have to tell your fullback, because I hate this. It's a dirty word. It's a four-letter word. Hope you don't mind if I say it. Slow. S-L-O-W. I don't say that, that four-letter word. It's anti-football. Don't tell him to slow down. Tell him to be more deliberate with his footwork. Okay? Not slow. Not a good word. Be more deliberate with your footwork. It works better. And now quarterback, once again, it's run-pass option. If they're open, throw it. If they're not, hey, baby, you're the guy that's got a little bit of shake and bake. Take off and gain six or seven yards and get your fanny out of bounds. We're going to run weak side waggle because we're running uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, buck sweep the other way, even though that's a tight end play. We are going to run some of it, of course, and, and we're running trap. So we're going to run, run uh, waggle. I'm going to run belly keep pass, too. You're running cross block belly. You're running cross belly, block belly option if you've got a kid with a little bit of wheels. I'm going to run belly keep pass. Great football play. Guard and tackle. It's waggle assignment, essentially. Center, right guard, right tackle, tight end. Step and cup. Step and cup. You're blocking area backside. Don't let anybody cross your face and violate your territory. The quarterback will reverse out to 7 o'clock. Punch fake to the fullback, who blocks B-gap after his good hard belly fake. Wing is in motion through the heels of the fullback, and he is going to help the left guard block the flank. The quarterback will pull the ball, put it on his hip, get to six and a half yard depth, and now he is eyeballing the receivers, getting his head around as quickly as he can after the fake. Get your head around. Get your head around. Get your head up. Those are things you're probably going to want to say. Soon as he pokes that football into the belly of the fullback and pulls it back, get your head around and look at your receivers. Um, I usually start out split end with post corner, and, and, and that, that arrow route by the slot is usually wide open. We, we teach an arrow route, and it's, it's even straighter than what I've got it drawn. And most of the time, the quarterback just zips it there, and we call that a long handoff. We just call it a long handoff. The, the, the arrow is going to catch the ball four yards. We ask him to get from three to five yards on the catch, or, 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 on, the, on the route. And then once you get it, put the ball in your outside arm and get upfield for six or seven more. Boom! He gets knocked into the sideline. Hey, hey! All right, great place. Seven yards, first down. Here we go. We call it a long handoff. We, we rep the crap out of, out of that arrow route. We throw it till the cows come home, our, 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 our running backs have got to be able to catch the doggone ball. They have to be able to do it. So we, we love belly keep pass. It's a real, real low maintenance, uh, fast developing football play where the fullback's faking cross block belly. We're pulling it and, you know, now we, you know, where the heck is the peanut? What shell is the darn peanut under? I would like to show one more thing after this. Uh, uh, maybe I, uh, I can show you this uh, graphically. Uh, at this point, so you can see, it's a little change up from belly keep pass. It's, it's really kind of neat. And I'm not very creative with the passing game. I am not. But this is something that usually is, is pretty wide open, and it's a nice change of pace on belly keep pass. We call this belly keep pass switch. The left wing is simply blocking down, taking motion back's place, and motion back is running jet motion. Jet! Jet! No, it isn't. He's running the flat route, replacing the left slot, and the quarterback's zipping it to him. He kind of comes out of there, kind of kind of like, where the heck did he come from? It's, it's, uh, pretty, it's, it's pretty good stuff. It, it is something that has really enabled us to, uh, to get a little creative in an uncreative passing mind that I possess. I'm not very good at it. But th this is kind of fun, and it's simply changing places with uh, both, uh, both halfbacks. That would conclude what I've got for you on weak side offense. I, it's certainly not a comprehensive package. It's not everything. But I think what the purpose is here, to give you enough to run a weak side package when people take the tight end side away, they're going to try to do it to you. 
I thank you for taking time to listen and watch this. I hope I'm of some service to you. Uh, the Wing is a great system. I hope those of you that are running it will keep running it. and just, just try to stay one step ahead of the posse and keep developing your package. Thanks so much for being here today.